WHT on BBC Radio Newcastle, Radio for the North East. We should have been playing Hanging on the Telephone um, because we've been, we've been taunting uh, Richard Holden, the Conservative MP for North West Durham, who won the seat from Labour in December, for not picking up the phone to us. Richard, our apologies. We had the wrong number. I do apologise. That's quite all right. Don't worry about it. 100% out our out. fault. Wait, well, you, did you have the radio on? Thinking, what are they doing? They're not calling. I, 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 I have the radio on thinking, what the hell are you up to? Yeah. OK, anyway. we've <laughs> got you now. We had Sir Keir Starmer on earlier on, so um, yeah. this, this uh, is your, your right to, to reply. So thank you very much, sir. You're a red wall, Victor... Even Boris Johnson says former Labour people lent the support to your party in December. Do you, do you fear yeah. a, 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 perhaps a revival under Keir Starmer? Um, I don't think so at the moment. I think it's a long way to go. But uh, it's certainly nothing to be taken for granted. I think, uh, you know, absolutely right. We're going to have to deliver on a, quite a few big promises, really. Uh, there's a lot around levelling up agenda that we need to get back to. Uh, you know, we've been take, hit for six by the coronavirus outbreak after... Uh, obviously, we had delivered on Brexit, which, I think, as you pointed out in the uh, your questions to Sir Keir, you know, he was really the architect of a lot of that Labour second referendum policy before. So I think he also had a degree of trust that he needs to rebuild as well. Hey, you mentioned levelling up there, and this leads me to a question from a listener um, who says, Richard is advocating the reopening of the railway line to concert. In the recovery phase, the government will have to make tough financial decisions and prioritise projects like the reopening of the Blythe and Tyne line. In my view, waste of taxpayers' money to open the concert line. It, it might be cheaper to give people taxis. Um, is, it, is it, in your view, still worth looking at? I think it's definitely worth looking at. The one thing I've been campaigning for is a feasibility study, just to see whether it's uh, viable. And if it is viable, I will push for it. Because I think so it might not things, be. Well, I, I, I hope it will be, and I'll be campaigning, I'll be, I'm campaigning currently for government cash to get that feasibility study done. But I think the really important thing here is that, you know, uh, Labour are currently backing the Mayor of London, Steve Carr, right, for a £46 billion Crossrail 2 before Crossrail 1's even finished. And I just want to see a hundredth of that money, which is what it would be, to be invested in uh, something like the uh, railway line connecting concert to the centre of uh, to the centre of Newcastle. Because I think it's just so important. Because without that connectivity, we don't got, we're not going to get jobs. You know, we've got no dual carriageway in North West Durham. I've got no railway lines in North West Durham. Mm. Except for Harris Line and Weirdale, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, why are we being, you know, for, for so long people told me on the doorstep, Last year, we've been left behind, we've been taken for granted by Labour, and we just want to see somebody at least trying to get some change here and trying to get some improvements, and that's what I'm trying to do. I've heard you asking about this in, in Parliament. In Parliament yesterday, um, Sakia told us it's up to the government to come up with a plan for children to return to school. He's, he's tried to engage, he said, with the Prime Minister on this. He says some children could go back safely, but the government knew it wasn't possible for all children to go back because of social distancing because of space. He says the failure to get children's education restarted is, is the fault of your party. Well, I heard that. And um, I think the, tr the truth is that, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, schools in Durham were meant to be going back. Uh, and then the Friday before, the uh, year groups, year one, year six, yeah, uh, were meant to be going back. The Labour Council came back and said, no, we're not going to do it anymore. And I think it's all very well for us as kid to come on and say one thing. Yeah, when his local party in, in local government, as it has been in County Durham for over 100 years now, Labour for over 100 years, they're doing something totally different. So it's, 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 it's all very well for him to say one thing on a national stage. But when it comes to actually working with the government on a local level, when it comes to schools in my constituency, it seems to be doing something totally different. But as we said to him, children go to Primark, then go to the shops, but not to school, which is crazy. It's not the union stopping that. It's the, it was the government's failure to plan and the, and the lack of confidence, you know, that seeped down to parents. Well, I think, um, I, as, as I said, I think it was, you know, County Durham Council made their own decision uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, I, didn't, I didn't agree with that then. I think there is a bigger issue around why the school opening and what we have to do with social distancing. I totally get that bit. But I think on the measures we've taken so far, you know, he might say he's, he's written into the Prime Minister, but when it comes down to Labour local authorities, you know, they've taken a totally different view. Are you worried? I mean, any government now would have struggled to deal with the crisis. Keir Starmer uh, admitted that. But the government's handling of it, Boris Johnson's performance, 
It's attracted criticism, even from some of your own party. There are rumours, whispers of discontent in the back benches, all these U-turns. Are you worried about the leadership? Well, I think on this sort of idea of U-turns, I think what we're facing is a very different situation to anything we've faced for very many years. You know, we've, we've never seen coronavirus or a, 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 an epidemic like this. So, of course, some of the, the, the government is going to respond to a very quickly, rapidly changing situation, which is what we've seen. Um, so I don't really buy into that, that argument. Okay. On the broader issues, I think there is, uh, you know, we have to look at uh, exactly the government's programme now going forward. Uh, obviously, this is, this is really not some of the things back. But I think we can get back on track. And I think one of the most important things to do that is the economy. And I think that's where the government's really stepped up. And I'm glad that the opposition have supported a lot of these measures as well. Things like the furlough scheme, the grants for local uh, businesses, um, the self-employed support scheme, the um, uh, bounce-back loans for huge numbers of small businesses in my community. One of the things I've been doing over the last few months has been doing everything to help employees and employers to try and get that support from government as quickly as they can. And that's just the important thing we've got to do. And, and Richard, it's Fergus here and uh, in the studio. First of all, apologies for the wrong number. Entirely my fault. Uh, I shall take the, I'll take the, the hit for that one entirely, not the production team's fault, my fault. Um, surely the, the government, uh, even in four years' time, will be very much judged on how it's handled this pandemic. And as you say, it's been more short-footed, some think, on the, the economy but on other factors, on leadership, etc., it, it is being uh, judged uh, and judged harshly in some cases, even by some uh, conservative, natural conservative supporters. And there are some on the backbenches who are really worried about uh, about that and the impact it has on on your chances, even in a few years' time. Yeah, no, I think I think what we're going to have to do with all of the coronavirus situation is actually look at when they when the when the entire situation has ended, which you know, given his, the way historic epidemics have gone is to look at it totally in the round. I think now it's far too early to make a judgment on that, but I think it will be one of the things that is part of that um, big uh, questions of the government and who you want to lead the country in the future. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's all very well for Sakir to come up here and say, oh, well, um, you know, we've learned the lessons about the EU, we're now going to back Brexit. Well, they didn't vote for it in the House of Commons in January when they had the, the opportunity to. And they said that in the run-up to the 2017 election. And then they went back on it again. So I think there's still a lot of questions around trust there uh, for the Labour Party to uh, to answer. And I think it's a, that's that's going to be another big question at the next general election as well. And finally, you, you've got a bit of time on your side, really. No general election till 2024. Uh, I don't know whether you've looked into your crystal ball how things are going to look then. Will your party have delivered on promises to level up? You we go back to the question at the beginning places yeah. like Durham, or will you still be cut off, isolated, as you said, then? Well, the one thing, I'm, the, the, the top priority for my campaigning at the moment is to try and get a replacement to Sholly Bridge. I'm working with local people on that. Uh, there's been a campaign group for many years, but it's been stuck in the weeds, and, it's, and I'm doing everything I can to get that through. So I think that's one of those uh, issues that people will judge us on in the next election, uh, and uh, you know, I'm hoping to see big progress in several areas. Richard, thanks for speaking to us. Richard Holden, MP there. Any thoughts from you? 0800 23.